Okay, let's start. Welcome to the Balkan 2K15. First time a charm. Dear guests, dear hackers, hackerin, welcome to our third congress in Novi Sad. This year we have lectures about amateur radio visualization of Wi-Fi traffic, security on the networks, and uh, so other things. Uh, special accent I want to put on uh, workshops that we'll have it tomorrow. Workshops for journalists and workshops for Voy Antonich uh, game workshop. We have a special guest from Crypto Party Berlin that have uh, that will make it Crypto Party learn it how to make it. Other guests, and this year we want to share with you all new knowledge to repeat that we all knew so far. And I want to say welcome to you, and let's start the game. And our first speaker will be from Novi Sad, Miodrag Milanovic, with MAME and presentation of software. Thank you. Well, uh, let's start. <laughs> uh, how many of you actually heard about the MAME? Yeah, <laughs> expected. And uh, how many of you actually heard about MASS? also expected and I will give the later point on, on this. Uh, this talk will be uh, mostly at uh, what MAME is, uh, what we are doing and about the pr uh, preservation of software and how we should, uh, how we can all help improving that. Uh, well, uh, first, uh, what MAME is? Uh, MAME is a multiple arcade machine emulator, uh, but that is the initial name of the project. Uh, lately, uh, we did some changes uh, how we do things, and we incorporated the sister project called MASS inside. Uh, the project was started by Nicola Salmoria in year uh, 1997 and uh, it was actually running uh, first one game, then five games and right now we are about uh, 30,000 games <laughs> actually playing inside uh, MAME itself. Uh, oh, just a second. Um. Uh, just a second. Okay, I did. Okay, um, MESS is a sister project of MAME, and it is uh, basically uh, emulation of computers and consoles. And that is uh, the thing that was uh, not so important in past uh, because uh, we had uh, less developers working on it and it was not so popular among the people as we can see also by the recognition of the name itself. Uh, and the problem was, uh, well, first the name Mass, you know, in English, <laughs> you know what it uh, tells you, and, but that was not a problem, but the problem was that there was a, a small amount of people working hard on uh, emulation, but uh, it, things were not popular, uh, it was not so well advertised, and uh, after all, it's, uh, it was not easy to put uh, uh, those kind of things, uh, those kind of emulations inside the arcade cabinet and play game for free, which was obviously not our intention. Uh, uh, next thing I would like to talk is uh, why the pres uh, preservation of software is uh, so important. Uh, first of all, uh, the, most of the computer companies uh, that are producing software basically uh, do not uh, save all, uh, all the versions of their uh, software. And that is uh, a really, really weird thing, but actually even the uh, big, uh, big companies uh, that produce games uh, actually never had a good database of the software itself. 
and during the time, uh, some of them, uh, like uh, Williams, for example, uh, gave the roms to uh, public, but those roms were uh, just the latest versions of uh, their software because they just had those in their databases, just the last one and uh, not the previous versions. And uh, our goal is to prevent uh, problems like this. Also, uh, things just get lost, you know, and uh, the problems could be some uh, uh, backup systems failures and uh, various other things that uh, struck the data storages and we just uh, have the loss of, of some important software. Uh, yeah, as I said, the storage mediums are just unreliable and uh, the problem is that uh, software in past were stored on cassettes, also on floppies, which have a limited time. Uh, so basically after uh, some time you just lost the, during the, due to the magnetization of the medium, you just lost data on it. And also, uh, when we look at the, what is uh, saved in form of uh, uh, any, any mean of saving, like uh, making a, a backup copies on the internet, you basically have just the good and nice stuff. So uh, you are uh, limited uh, to preservation of the uh, software, which is just well known and uh, well done and that uh, it is not up to us uh, to decide uh, what should be saved and what should not be. Uh, next uh, thing will be how we actually do that uh, from the side of uh, MAME project. Uh, we use the uh, source code as a document. Uh, so basically, uh, our, so our source code, I mean, uh, MAME is done in C++, and you actually have the parts of code uh, which uh, contains uh, just the CRCs and H uh, SHA uh, one of the files, ROM files, uh, from the original games or uh, from the original firmers of various computers or arcade games. Uh, why this is important? The uh, thing is that source code does not have anything uh, that is uh, legally owned by uh, any other uh, company. So basically it is uh, safe to store that as a part of the source code. Uh, also, uh, you, uh, you have the one place uh, on which you can actually check if some of the dumps uh, is valid or not. And we have a tool inside our uh, project uh, that can loop through all the uh, known ROMs and check if one of your ROMs is available in our database. Uh, the second thing we uh, do uh, from about two years in the past is XML software uh, database. Uh, uh, we called it soft lists. And those actually uh, are basically the same thing, uh, but uh, made in an external, uh, as external documents, uh, in which we have the uh, listed software uh, in, in, a, in, a, uh, in form of a list of, uh, for example, floppies. And uh, you have a, also a variant of grouping of, of those. So, for example, you have some uh, games uh, that are uh, distributed on five uh, floppies. So you have all of them listed and with their sizes and uh, a CRC. So you can actually check if those are real uh, good dumps. Uh, thing that we are uh, now store is actually a best available dump of uh, existing software. Why this is important? The uh, thing is that, for example, uh, you, have, um, uh, you, you can find uh, some floppy disk containing a copy of, uh, of one uh, computer game and uh, you make a, a copy of that. You're, uh, it's not original medium, but still it's that game you know, and you have a, a copy of it. So that is best wha what you have in that moment. But during the time, uh, you uh, find the original medium 
and what we do is then uh, made a uh, original medium dump and during the time uh, all the uh, database is cleared but we never get lost those that are rarely available so uh, it's it's always good to have at least some version if you uh, can't have uh, the original one uh, of course uh, we are trying to push uh, all the contributors uh, just to uh, give us uh, only the the uh, the originals uh, from original medium and uh, dumped on the on the verified uh, methods uh, which is uh, mostly important for example for floppies uh, and that's uh, our next point. So uh, basically, uh, floppies are characteristic uh, because they are just, uh, you know, changes of magnetic flux, nothing else. Uh, but uh, the thing is that some of the uh, uh, floppy protection is based uh, exactly on the on the uh, uh, some changes. Uh, th uh, that are based on the speed of uh, or velocity of changing the uh, the head over the uh, while reading the uh, the data, so you uh, you can get in the position that you actually can't run software because you are not emulating properly uh, that uh, uh, that medium. Uh, why the uh, emulation is important. First, uh, we are trying to preserve uh, documents and software, and we try to do that without any change on the uh, uh, on on that uh, software or or that documents. Uh, that way, uh, we are able to to preserve uh, some uh, older software and able uh, are able to show it uh, how it uh, how it worked in the past on the modern. Uh, devices. So we are using actually uh, latest technology uh, to execute the old code. Also, uh, we are using the uh, the modern storage for the uh, old software. So all the cassettes are basically now stored in a, in a digital form. So we don't have a problem of uh, uh, like we had before. Uh, using MAME. Uh, what is MAME actually for and uh, who should actually use it? Uh, well, first thing that everybody thinks it MAME is for is for playing games. Well, it's not just that. I mean, we started as an uh, arcade emulator and that was year 97, <laughs> so 18 years ago. So it was a long time ago and, and basically uh, our goal uh, now is to, to try to change that. Uh, one of the important things that happened meanwhile uh, was a merge with MAME, MS. Uh, so uh, what that uh, gave, gave us is uh, uh, basically uh, it, we involved the, the development for computers and for uh, consoles into the world of MAME. Uh, MESS was uh, always uh, just as a sister project of MAME. So basically what we did is that we used the, the, the source code of MAME as a, as a start point and then uh, just uh, add new uh, devices emulation and add the support for uh, reading cassettes and uh, floppies and so on. Uh, one of the uh, most powerful things uh, inside the MAME is its debugger. Uh, debugger is, is uh, uh, very useful uh, since you can basically uh, develop uh, and see how the things are working on actual machine from the past uh, by executing it. Uh, you can change uh, a, a code, you can change data areas. Uh, basically, you, you have a, a sandbox in which you can, uh, you can play with, with the old computers and software for it. Uh, I, I can give you an example of, uh, that we are actually uh, right now uh, able to run uh, Windows 2000 uh, in the main. So on the uh, uh, f uh, Intel processors. So basically, um, uh, we, we, we reach th that level of emulation. Uh, but uh, uh, also, uh, uh, what is important is that uh, our goal is uh, for MAME to be used 
uh, in the development of uh, some new hardware and to use it as a, as a development tool uh, for creating a, a new hardware that actually do does not exist. Because, for example, we have the uh, 80 cores uh, for CPUs and also a lot of other sound cores, video cores. So basically you can easily uh, uh, take all of that, uh, create some virtual machine that doesn't exist and write software for it. And then you can basically build it afterwards. Uh, important thing that uh, happened, uh, that is going to happen, but it's, it's still in works, is going open source. Uh, MAME uh, was always source available. So for all these years, we always gave our source uh, to people and uh, it was uh, free to download. And uh, the main problem why uh, it was not open source is that there was a misuse of some other companies and persons that uh, thought it was really good to uh, make money off of it. And basically, uh, the thing that they did is they, uh, they built arcade cabinets and then they sold uh, those arcade cabinets uh, with MAME inside. And also they used the name of the MAME, which is trademark. And that's why we needed to uh, register that trademark in order to prevent this kind of problem. And the main problem is that basically uh, after that, uh, we were those that, uh, that were having a problem because of their misuse, because companies uh, were sending complaints to us, thinking that we are actually, uh, you know, because we created the emulator. But legally, there were no problems. The uh, first thing that we did is that we used the SVN. And the uh, first thing that we did, we, di we joined two SVNs. One was uh, a MAME uh, SVN, which was private. And the other was MESS SVN, which was public uh, during that time. And we merged that and created that first as a public uh, repo. And then uh, after that, we decided to move to the GitHub. And that was a really good and important step because that is how we gained uh, more people uh, to work with uh, our software. And the good thing is that uh, actually what we uh, did is that we uh, opened ourselves to community and said, OK, uh, be aware that uh, MAME is there, that we are open, and that you can contribute easy to us. And uh, to be honest, it's really saved us a lot of time uh, for the merging of the uh, additional things that the people are sending to us. Uh, thing is that uh, MAME have, has its own license in the past, and yeah, still, uh, and it's modified uh, BSD3 uh, license, and that uh, only change uh, that actually is there is that uh, we are basically, uh, you can, you know, you reuse code, uh, uh, you can, uh, without any consequences, but uh, a actually you can't use it for the commercial purposes. You can't s sell that. And that's the, the restriction which is not recognized by OSI. And that's the reason why we are uh, actually moving uh, to the new license. Uh, but uh, since there is really a large number of contributors, and we still need, need a way uh, somehow to protect uh, their rights on their code. The uh, uh, thing that I proposed was those, these three uh, licenses. Uh, most of the code right now, we are somewhere about 96% of coverage of uh, code that is licensed. Put, uh, because we, we needed to contact uh, each and every contributor from the last 18 years, and that's a hell of a job. So it's not that, that easy. And 96% uh, 90, uh, of code is not covered with the licenses. And about, uh, uh, I think it's about 84% of, of current code is BSD3. And this is really important because this really gives a, a full freedom 
of usage of our code. And uh, what is most important is that uh, it's basically uh, core of the project is BSD3. And that makes uh, things easier for uh, any future use. And GPL2 and LGPL2 are mostly code that is uh, emulation of specific computers or arcades. So, uh, because there are some things that people really spend a lot of money and effort in the past, and they uh, want to protect that in some way, just at least to, to be able to get uh, a code back uh, from whoever using it. Uh, yeah, the uh, one important thing is that uh, why we did uh, move to the open source uh, is that actually good thing for us would be usage of other open source libraries and then we will be compatible when we are also the open source fully and uh, also there are a lot of companies uh, that are actually giving uh, their tools uh, for free to all the developers that are producing the open source software, which is sometimes really important for us, especially for some profiling and things like that. Uh, what uh, also uh, this should uh, improve is making uh, things easier for academic uh, usage and history preservation. We have a, a lot of contact with people in past uh, that ask us, can they use, for example, uh, MAME inside museums to show uh, things they actually own there. So, uh, uh, in some countries, when you own, uh, basically, when you own a, uh, a computer, uh, you, can, uh, you can take its ROM, uh, read the content, and use it on the, on the emulator, and that would be legal, because you own the real machine as well. Uh, in some countries, that's not the case, but at least in some it is. And uh, uh, basically, they couldn't do that because uh, they are a museum and they are actually, uh, you actually need to pay to come inside the museum and that would be commercial use. Even if we agree on that, they could have a problem. And uh, this should at least uh, solve some, uh, some issues like this. So uh, we are really happy if uh, there are museums or schools using uh, MAME as a tool for uh, learning and to showing some things. Uh, also, uh, what we want uh, to do is to let legal owners of the rights for specific uh, games or ROMs of, uh, or so some specific software to be able to use MAME as a platform. Uh, so basically, uh, no, we are not going uh, commercial uh, but uh, we will st always be open uh, we will still always be free for use uh, but uh, we will just let uh, the uh, other companies that own the, the rights for the specific game to use the meme as a core and uh, to, to create a basically emulator that will uh, run that game and as uh, with, with the meme core. Uh, I will uh, do a little talk about maintaining of uh, such a big project as uh, MAME. Uh, there are currently 52 active developers. Uh, it's big and it's not that big. Uh, when you say, uh, see that there is 200 megabytes of pure source code. So that is just C++, C, C++ code, nothing else. Uh, there is additional 60 megabytes of X XML uh, software definitions, but basically it's a, it's a real uh, large code base. And uh, during the past years, uh, we were, for example, five years ago, most of the code was uh, in pure C, and now everything is in C++. Uh, it was a transition that took uh, a long time, uh, but uh, if you keep in mind uh, about how large the project is and that people are only working in their spare time, it really takes uh, a lot of effort to put and to, to transfer everything. 
and the thing is that for example even on the on the high end computers it, it takes you at least 12 uh, 15 minutes to compile all from scratch so we are talking about almost 5 gigahertz cpus and <laughs> you know and the the thing is that it's it's uh, it's a process it takes a while uh, but we are trying to do that uh, points of improvement uh, well as i said uh, uh, this project is not done and will never be done actually and that's good thing and that's also a bad thing a good thing is because uh, we are actually s uh, always improving ourselves and trying to to add more more and more inside uh, MAME. Uh, we see our uh, mistakes from the past and we try to to improve that somehow uh, the worst thing <laughs> we actually have is ui <laughs> i mean uh, we were never very much user friendly and that's the problem with most of the users we have uh, that it's not easy to use uh, that is becoming more and more uh, harder to use but you know uh, that uh, MAME was always developer, developer friendly and never user friendly and we are trying to change that uh, we are also uh, in in good uh, cooperation and uh, with the author of uh, BGFX and uh, we are trying to use that graphic library and to use it in our system and to uh, because it's a, it's a good uh, starting point for us and uh, i personally think it's it will be good for the future of the project uh, also a point of improvement will be uh, inter-process communication so uh, what is the idea uh, you are actually uh, emulating, for example, a PC computer, uh, but you would like to have another PC computer and to make them talk to each other. So uh, that's, uh, that's our goal, basically, to have uh, multiple uh, machines uh, running on your computer and be able to talk to each other. Uh, right now, we can do that uh, on the network layer. So basically, uh, uh, we have, for example, uh, emulation of uh, uh, old Mac computers from uh, Motorola era, and they are uh, able to use the network cards and able to use the uh, internet from today, and you can actually browse using the uh, browser from the OS of uh, old Mac computer. And that's that's kind of interesting thing because you you could actually try some things from the past you were not able because uh, there are things like Vax machines and there are PDP 11s and things like that that we are trying to get in into Mame and Mass and make basically make it uh, available for people to try out. Uh, also, uh, as I mentioned, BGFX is 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 our way, I think, out to use the 3D acceleration of available hardware, because there are a lot of ar arcades that are actually uh, uh, made uh, with the uh, 3D uh, hardware, and also we have uh, things like Voodoo Graphics uh, that is that was a lot. Uh, uh, I mean, w very good for its time, and basically uh, 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 our idea is to use existing 3D uh, cap capabilities uh, in order to make uh, this happen and uh, to be much faster and to use that uh, when we uh, have that available on our machine. Uh, next thing is uh, exposing uh, whole core uh, using Lua language and uh, that's a uh, I uh, believe you probably uh, a lot of you guys heard about it and it's really uh, it's, a, it's a simple language uh, easy to incorporate, incorporate with the C and C++ and basically idea is to uh, expose uh, as much as we can from the core uh, so basically, uh, you can uh, create the plugins and some additional uh, things to the emulation and make uh, uh, make it more usable. Uh, for example, uh, people are always trying to use some cheats 
and things like that, and also high scores. Uh, that was a uh, thing that was removed from the MAME time ago. And reason why it was removed is because the real machine didn't save high scores. So emulation should not save the high scores as well. And the uh, thing is that you can actually, with uh, this kind of scripting, uh, you can make a script that will actually do the same for you. S just on the on the close of the machine, it will just go and save the specific parts of memory on on file, and you will have your high score saved. About the goals for the future, uh, well, uh, our main goal is to uh, to create a main core as a universal platform for emulation. So basically, to uh, to make it a de facto standard for emulation, and uh, to make more uh, people and more companies to use it as a, as a startup point. Uh, uh, my next personal goal is to finish licensing process. It's a process that actually took me uh, about. Uh, a month to reach uh, uh, some initial state in which we have a lot of things covered, but some things, uh, some people are actually really hard to find, and that's basically the problem. We can't uh, go without at least trying to contact uh, each and every contributor for past from past, and that's time-consuming. Uh, one thing that we actually would like to see is our official mobile version. And we know that there are a lot of mobile versions of MAME, but those were uh, basically based on the code that we produced uh, beginning of 2000, year 2000. So uh, you actually have about at least 10 years lost, <laughs> meanwhile, of development. And that's a lot uh, what was done during that time, and that, what we, that is what uh, we would like to change. Uh, also, uh, we would like to add whatever is left to be emulated. And that's not a small amount of things, definitely. Uh, we started with, uh, you know, when I started on working on project, I, I noticed, for example, that there were no uh, computers from this region at all added. So I try and add one by one. And uh, after a year, then I noticed there, there were a lot of Eastern European computers, at least at, at all not available. And I also then started to add in them. I, I tried to contact some uh, uh, Russian developers, some developers from East Germany, ex East Germany. And they were really uh, helpful, and they, uh, they sent us uh, ROMs, and they sent us uh, their version of emulators and they help us uh, fix some issues. And actually, during the time, we added uh, you know, uh, hundreds of machines uh, that were just never, never in of interest for the Western people. Uh, but uh, uh, after some time, you see that there, uh, there was just, you know, uh, those machines were really interesting for, for people. For example, everyone wants to see how the first, first machine that uh, ran uh, Tetris looked like and what's that machine, how it booted, how it worked, you know. You just want to know how it looked. And th that is what uh, we actually try to do. So there is always something to be emulated and uh, I hope we will uh, re uh, get more contributions during the time. Uh, yeah, I think I'm <laughs> at, uh, almost at the end of, of my time, so I would like to ask you if there is some questions. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hello. Well, actually... Yeah, <laughs> just a second. <laughs> mm. Am I better? Yeah. Okay, I have, uh, oh, sorry. I have one comment and uh, two questions. Uh, first is uh, regarding magnetic media. Uh, 
my experience with ma magnetic, my own magnetic media is that uh, if it is uh, well stored, it will work. Yep. I mm -hmm. have uh, my tapes and floppies from over 30 years ago and they still function perfectly, actually. And uh, I'm very happy about it. Uh, what I wanted to ask is, uh, do you have any cooperation with uh, Cryoflux people? The, uh, the, they made a um, yep. device to read the floppy disks. Mm -hmm. And the uh, other question is, uh, do you have cooperation with uh, other people who work on uh, uh, specific emulators for the machines? Yeah. Uh, well, I will first answer the, the second one. Uh, so, uh, actually, we do have the cooperation with with people working on other emulators, and yeah, uh, during the time we were known as a, a Borg uh, emulator because we assimilate everything that we find. But uh, basically, it was <laughs> not that true. But uh, thing is that. Uh, what is different between MAME and the other uh, emulators is that we actually have a goal to emulate everything, you know, and all of those other projects have a goal to emulate just specific uh, uh, machines or uh, just from the specific manufacturer, for example. And the uh, thing is that when they are finished, they are finished and there is nothing to improve and those projects basically are, uh, uh, most of those projects uh, have even uh, better capabilities in some uh, places than, than MAME. Uh, and the reason is that they can basically optimize uh, their work uh, because they are doing one thing. We are trying to generalize that and that's, uh, that is a problem but it is also a good thing because you have the more. So we have the, the good uh, communications with, uh, with a lot of authors, for example for the uh, author of Modeller uh, emulator, also from uh, PSX uh, author, and we have the communications also with other, I have the good communication with some Russian developers and <laughs> every one of, uh, every of us have a, a communication with some of the people. Uh, think about the cryoflux and the, the other uh, ways of, of preserving the, uh, the media. Well, uh, thing is that uh, they kept their format closed and that was our biggest problem. Uh, we could create the uh, uh, image of media, uh, but we didn't have a, a, a. We were not able to read it because they 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 just have a DLL and provide us uh, just the, the interface, and that was not uh, enough for us because uh, we are actually multi multi-platform projects, so we need to work on Linux and OS X as well. And the thing that happened is that basically one of our guys uh, did a reverse engineering of whole uh, their, their streams and basically uh, he documented everything and put that uh, online and the day after they put their documentation online with the full description of everything and they were matching but they were just from the different authors so yeah basically they they, they were thinking of opening themselves but yeah it was just a moment of of decision so basically yeah at the, at the end we we have the the cryoflux support yeah thank you Any more questions? Feel free to ask, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, from Angers. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, we were in, in communications. Uh, yeah, I, I exchanged uh, a few messages with, with him afterwards and yeah, <laughs> I seen that, and it's it's really uh, a good thing that uh, there are actually people that uh, promote uh, our software uh, in the world. Because I mean, uh, yeah, thing is that uh, most of the people see it as a way how to play free games, which is 
you know, not our intention. And basically, our idea is, I mean, uh, using it for something totally different. And uh, for example, uh, we have the contribution that expanded our Lua support. And the good thing there is that uh, basically the guy uh, created the script, uh, which, uh, for example, show you the hit boxes in a game, so you can actually see uh, where it will strike you before it strikes. So yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it's, it's a cool stuff, but you can actually do that without any code change. So you have just a scripting language in which you can do that, and that's that's really good because uh, it let people uh, imagination work and they 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 can create something new. And the good thing is also that you know. Uh, uh, we are working with uh, with the different uh, uh, computers, different devices, and during the time they are just uh, overrun by the new technology, and we just need to move and to to improve ourselves and to be able to emulate something from the past in order to use it. For example, now you just can't uh, execute any of uh, MS DOS 16-bit uh, uh, applications. Uh, you were able to do that on the 32-bit OS, but you can't do that on the 64-bit OS. So, yeah, you know, we, we need to find a way uh, in order to, to make people uh, be able to use those kind of applications because they, they store just or they, don't, they can't move uh, the, their software or they don't want to do that. And, it, and it's, I mean, it's easier to emulate Wax and just to copy all software and then use the same software there and uh, read the data uh, nor to just you know take and rewrite everything so it's that would be very time consuming any other questions yep. okay, okay sure You said that with your database of software that uh, you want to make sure that you are not uh, against someone's copyright. Yeah. So uh, do you have some criterion how you decide if something is abandonware or not? You mentioned Windows 2000. Yeah. I imagine you would not put this into your code database. No, no. So what do you put in? How no, do you no, no, decide? No, no. Uh, oh, well, uh, just let me explain. Uh, basically, what we, uh, what we put in our uh, database are just the uh, some file name, uh, size, and CRC, and SIJ1. So you basically have just a hash of and the size, which is enough to distinguish files. And uh, uh, we do not provide any of those ROMs because we can't. And there are, uh, but there are uh, some companies that uh, gave us a right to provide uh, their roms and basically you can find them on our site those are the, just some simple games but it's it's okay i mean during the time we uh, we believe that there will be some other companies that will also give their games for free and at least uh, those will be available i mean they can't sell it anymore uh, but the main problem is that you have issues like, uh, for example, if it was um, a game from Sony era, uh, you have a, a CD which contained the data that is not a that problematic. So you will have the uh, uh, some company that is having right on the code. Uh, but the problem is, for example, that music is uh, that is used on for that game uh, was licensed just for that one release and for the time period of I don't know three four years, and after that even Sony can't. Uh, sell it anymore with those songs. They need to put something else or to relicense. So it's really, I mean, uh, those legal stuff are really <laughs> tricky, and we are trying to be out of that. But you know, it's it's, uh, it's as I said, it's for example for the uh, relicensing is really time consuming just to contact all the people to ask them uh, what uh, license would they like to, uh, to co for their code to be used. But uh, then you have other problem. Uh, some of the people just don't understand the difference between licenses. Uh, not sure, they're not sure how uh, they will be protected. And uh, the thing is that what we noticed is that 
uh, MAME license didn't protect anyone, basically. Uh, thing that we changed in past, and we said it's not allowed to be used in commercial use, didn't save us from commercial use. I mean, e everyone who wished actually did that, and we can't do anything because we are not recognized uh, license, you know, and there is no, uh, no nobody co who could, we don't have a lawyer who will go and say, you know, but it also depends in which country you are, and it's it's kind of complex things. But yeah, we, we never stored, uh, delivered the software. We just delivered the, uh, the hash and the name and the size, which is enough to, to distinguish them. Yep, sorry. Yeah, 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 you have torrents, you can... I mean, it's, it's really easy to find uh, uh, any ROMs for, for MAME. I mean, uh, uh, they always ask us, uh, why uh, do we put, uh, I don't know, fruit machines? Why do we put pinball machines? I mean, those are as well arcades. Uh, for now, they're not playable. That's the fact. There, there are also a lot of drivers that are not playable. They're not, uh, emulation is not finished or uh, protection is not uh, yet uh, uh, done. And basically uh, what we uh, say is that we will always uh, uh, give the full set and officially you will always get a full set of, of, of uh, games listed. So uh, people, uh, people will then download the torrents, etc. and they will distribute that all over the world, so software will be preserved that way. So basically, uh, uh, we are making sure that uh, not only nice things are saved, but everything is basically saved. So uh, even if it's produced by the IBM, or if it's produced by Sony, or if it's produced by some company that never heard of, it will be saved, you know, and that's that's the whole goal of the of the s preservation of software vi that we are trying to achieve. Okay, I think that will be it. Ah, okay, one more question, sure. Hi. Yeah. Okay. So Hi. Um, I have a question. You said uh, that uh, MAME was once open source and then it went closed source. Am I right? Did I understand uh, you well? Or? No, no, no. Uh, okay. It was always uh, source available, uh -huh. uh, but uh, it's basically. I mean, it was. Uh, you you can always download source, but it was never uh, uh, open source till recent times. Yeah. So the source was available like in public domain or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you yeah. could basically download uh, each release. Uh, SVN, uh, yeah, you, you know it is good. Uh, SVN was not public uh, and you could actually not see whole development uh, during time. Uh, but uh, 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 when the release time uh, comes, uh, we, uh, we place the uh, source code at our website. So, so that's basically changed now. We moved to GitHub, and basically you can have the source always available, and uh, you can download even the old releases from the 0 0.1. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Okay, I believe that's it. So thank you, everyone, and I wish you good rest of the day. Thank you.